I am embarrassed and humiliated by the conduct of some of the people on my team. There's no doubt in my mind that the conduct that they exhibited is completely unacceptable and showed a lack of respect for their appropriate role of government and for the people that we're trusted to serve. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie spoke for exactly one hour, 48 minutes and four seconds yesterday. His marathon press conference about the George Washington Bridge controversy went on for so long that it delayed the start of a hearing in the New Jersey State Assembly that was aimed at getting to the bottom of that incident. The people in the hearing room just sat around waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for Governor Christie to finish. When he did finally finish, Governor Christie's office decided that of the roughly 19,000 words that he spoke in that press conference, these right here, these were the most important ones. But what I also want the people of New Jersey to know is that this is the exception, not the rule. And they've seen that over the last four years with the way I've worked and what I've done. So I don't want to fall into the trap of saying, well, this one incident happened, therefore the one incident defines the whole. It does not. This is the exception. This is not the rule. Shortly after Governor Christie's press conference was over, his office clipped and blasted out that section of his remarks as, as what they wanted to be the takeaway message from the press conference. Governor Christie insisting that this is not how he does things. This is not the way he operates as governor. And that is sort of key to Chris Christie successfully managing to keep some distance between himself and what happened here, right? Arguing that his administration exacting terrible retribution for some perceived political slight was an anomalous error. It was a mistake. It was not business as usual. That's not the way he has governed in New Jersey. He can't possibly understand why anybody who worked for him would think that's what the governor would want them to do. Do you remember Jim McGreevy? Jim McGreevy was the former governor of New Jersey who was forced to resign in the middle of a sex scandal back in 2004. Remember, I am a gay American. Uh, when Jim McGreevy stepped down as governor, New Jersey Senate president at the time, a man named Richard Cody, uh, he ascended to the job. He became the new governor. Richard Cody served out the rest of Jim McGreevy's term, and then he decided that he would return to the state Senate. And in 2011, once he was back in the state Senate, Richard Cody got into a very public battle with the newly elected governor, Chris Christie. Richard Cody decided that he wanted to block two of Governor Christie's nominees. And that caused the two of them to effectively go to political war. Chris Christie held a press conference in which he railed against Richard Cody for being, quote, combative and difficult. Mr. Cody went to the press and called out Governor Christie for being childish. And then things left the realm of that specific political fight. Look at this, quote, days later, Mr. Cody was walking out of an event in Newark, New Jersey, when he got a call from the state police superintendent informing him that he would no longer be afforded the state trooper who accompanied him to occasional public events, which is a courtesy granted to all former governors. Richard Cody, a former governor, was stripped of his security detail just days after holding up a pair of Chris Christie nominees. But that was just the start of it. Quote, that same day, Mr. Cody's cousin, who had been appointed to the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, was fired from his job, as was a close friend of Mr. Cody's and his former deputy chief of staff, who was working for a different state agency. So Richard Cody blocks a pair of Chris Christie nominees. Then in response, within days, his security detail gets stripped, his cousin gets fired, his close friend and former staffer also gets fired. They both lose their jobs with the state. This is a man named Alan Rosenthal. Alan Rosenthal in 2011 was a professor of political science at Rutgers University in New Jersey. That year, Democrats and Republicans in the state legislature were fighting about how to redraw the state's legislative districts to conform with the 2010 census. Redistricting, all important redistricting, right? The commission that was tasked with redrawing the maps uh, was deadlocked. It was deadlocked between the plan that was favored by the Republicans and the plan that was favored by the Democrats. So Alan Rosenthal, this Rutgers University professor, was brought in to be the tie-breaking vote between the otherwise deadlocked two sides. Alan Rosenthal heard from both sides. He studied the maps for weeks. At one point, Governor Christie paid Professor Rosenthal a surprise personal visit to lobby for the Republican maps. It was a move that nobody could remember a governor ever pulling before. 
But in the end, in the end, Alan Rosenthal picked the Democratic map. In making his decision, he said, quote, it took me five hours of deliberations. I have tried to be diligent. I have tried to be honest. I have tried to be fair. Three months after that decision, Alan Rosenthal learned that Governor Chris Christie had personally and without warning used his line item veto to slash state funding for the fellowship program that Professor Rosenthal ran at Rutgers. How you like me now? The top Democrat in the state Senate reacted at the time, quote, for him to punish people to prove his political point, he's just a rotten blank to do what he did. Governor Christie's office denied that the professor's redistricting decision had anything to do with the decision to eliminate the funding for his programs. But New Jersey politics are full of examples like this over the last four years since Governor Christie has been governor. Politicians from either party who cross Chris Christie in some way then feel his wrath. There's another Republican state legislator who criticized Chris Christie's handling of a blizzard in 2010. Very mild criticism of the handling of a 2010 blizzard. He was then warned by the governor's staff to not show up to an event that Chris Christie was holding in his district. An anonymous Chris Christie aide told the press at the time he got what he deserved. The thing that all of these acts of political retribution have in common is that they're all directed at political players, or at least people who are inside the political system, people who have opted in, people who are playing the same game that Chris Christie plays, people who are involved in politics. But this time in the bridge scandal, it was not somebody inside the political class that was hurt. This wasn't political retribution that just landed on Mayor Mark Sokolich in Fort Lee or the leader of the Senate Democrats who represents Fort Lee, Senator Loretta Weinberg. No, this time, it was hundreds of thousands of innocent people trying to get to work, trying to get to school. It was the first week of school, trying to get a response from an ambulance, trying to go about their daily lives. And hundreds of thousands of people were all collateral damage from some political revenge attack, the cause of which is still unknown. Business as usual in terms of the, you know, decision to go after somebody, not business as usual in terms of the consequences. How did that line get crossed? Why? And who had to know about it? Morehead was somebody who knows more about Chris Christie than just about anybody else in the press corps. Stay with us. Regardless of what the facts ultimately uncover, this was handled in a callous and indifferent way. And it is not the way this administration has conducted itself over the last four years and not the way it will conduct itself over the next four. It is not the way this administration has conducted itself over the last four years. Is that true? Joining us now from in front of the New Jersey Capitol is a chilly Charlie Style. He's a columnist at the record of Bergen County, New Jersey. Mr. Style, thanks for being with us tonight, particularly uh, on a cool night and you're outside. Good evening. Uh, Governor Christie said that the kind of political retribution that has been alleged and now documented in this bridge scandal, he says that's not the way his administration has operated over the last four years. Uh, you're a pretty close observer of him as a politician. Is, is he right to say that? Well, he, he has, uh, he has uh, look, political payback has always been part of the New Jersey uh, landscape. Uh, the, the quick answer is not really no is really the answer to that but to put it in context every governor and almost every politician in the state indulge in some form of p political payback it's a, it's a, everybody once in a while bears their knuckles but he's kind of elevated into a kind of a full cage match full whatever that where you can kick and 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 punch at the same time and what's really different about chris christie's uh, level of payback is not only the the pettiness of it but he, uh, he, no one is um, uh, beyond the pale. I mean, he's attacked venerated people, or, or he's put people um, that are venerated in the, in the line of fire. For example, he tried to take down Tom Kane Jr.'s son, who uh, was uh, trying to get another term as Senate, uh, uh, ma uh, Senate Minority Leader. And so he personally got involved in trying to uh, thwart another term for Tom Kane Jr. because he was apparently upset about how uh, Tom Kane uh, Jr.'s 
handling of the uh, Senate uh, legislative races. So uh, what's ironic about that is that Tom Kane Sr. was Chris Christie's mentor, and Chris Christie would probably have no career in politics if he didn't show up as a 16-year-old at Tom Kane's house in Livingston, New Jersey in the late 70s to be a campaign volunteer. So, uh, and, and even Dick Cody, taking on Dick Cody. And now Dick Cody is a, a bare-knuckled practitioner of Essex County politics, but he is a very popular figure in New Jersey politics, and a lot of um, voters in New Jersey uh, have a warm regard for him for stabilizing the state after uh, the downfall of Jim McGreevy. Uh, and then, there, and you mentioned Alan Rosenthal is almost uh, deified in the political community as uh, it, by by members of both parties for his uh, his uh, knowledge, scholarly knowledge, his fairness throughout the years, and serving on commissions and boards. So, um, it, and, and I, so that's the difference about Chris Christie and how he's operated. And I think what's really interesting, I think it's deliberate. I think he's tried to set this message that uh, I am not to be crossed with. I am not to be fooled with, and I think it's had a very, a very, uh, uh, it's, and he's used that very effectively. Charlie, I have to ask you, you wrote today that the firings of two stop, top staffers, uh, yesterday's campaign manager, as deputy chief of staff, he said, only came because the plot was hatched within his tight-knit circle, inflaming suspicions that Christie was the one who ordered the vindictive lane closings that turned Fort Lee into a parking lot. Why do you say that exactly? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Well, no, I think that, that is, that's exactly what has happened. I mean, once it's one thing to have the suspicion growing in a kind of a brush fire out at the Port Authority uh, with his appointees out there. But once it comes inside, inside the house, uh, or inside the state house, and right inside his inner sanctum, then uh, that suspicion that was on a low Kindle now is in a full flame because it's, I mean, he has a circle of uh, of uh, he operates a very tight-knit ship, and he, he even used the word himself in the press conference, I operate a very loyal uh, group, and we consider ourselves family. So it's very hard for a lot of people, strange credulity, frankly, to think that anything of this magnitude could go on in his uh, inner circle without his knowledge. Charlie Style, columnist at the record of Bergen County, New Jersey, which has been a national treasure in terms of its uh, reporting on this story from the very beginning. Charlie, thank you very much for your time tonight. It's nice to have you here. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, more to come. Stay with us.